Tyler drummed his fingers on the cracked dashboard of his rusted-out pickup, sighing as the dry Nevada heat bled through the windshield. The sun hung low on the horizon, painting the sky in hues of orange and purple that seemed to stretch endlessly across the barren landscape. His phone buzzed, and he tapped it awake to see another past-due notification glowing red against the dim screen. Rent was behind, again. Groceries, utilities, even the truck's insurance, all piling up like tumbleweeds against a fence. Desperation sat on his chest like the heat did on the land, a constant suffocating presence he couldn't shake. He needed a job, badly. It wasn't that Tyler wasn't skilled, he was a damn good mechanic. His father had taught him everything about engines before drinking himself into an early grave, leaving Tyler with a wealth of knowledge and a stubborn determination to make it on his own. But jobs in the middle of nowhere didn't exactly pay well, and the locals were either broke or stubborn enough to fix things themselves. So, when he stumbled across an ad posted to a local board for a gas station mechanic offering $70 per hour, he called without hesitation. It felt too good to be true, like a mirage shimmering on the distant highway. But Tyler wasn't in the business of being picky anymore. A gravelly voice answered after two rings, the sound of it rough like sandpaper against wood. You serious about working out here? The man asked, his tone flat and uninviting. Tyler swallowed hard, his throat dry. Yeah, I mean, if it's still open. He hesitated, a flicker of unease dancing across his mind. Route 375, right? That's, uh... Yep. The voice cut him off, sharp as a knife. Extraterrestrial highway. The words hung in the air, heavy with unspoken implications. Everyone around here knew the stories. The highway, stretching along miles of dust and sky, with strange lights trailing behind drivers, radio static that felt alive, and townsfolk swapping tales of missing time and odd encounters over lukewarm beers at the local dive. It was the kind of place that attracted conspiracy theorists, UFO hunters and truckers passing through at weird hours of the night, their eyes wide and haunted in the neon glow of gas station signs. The man continued, his voice as dry and cracked as the desert floor. Pays high because we're short-staffed. Not a lot of people want to stick around. You'll just fix what's broken in the garage out back and follow the rules. A chill ran down Tyler's spine, despite the oppressive heat. What rules? You'll see when you get there. The line clicked dead, leaving Tyler with nothing but the soft hum of static in his ear. He stared at his phone, uneasy but desperate. The screen reflected his tired face, dark circles under his eyes, and a week's worth of stubble on his chin. He pocketed the phone and tapped the gas gauge. A quarter tank. Enough to make it out there, maybe not enough to make it back. The thought settled in his gut like a lead weight. Hell with it, he muttered, twisting the key in the ignition. The truck roared to life, a familiar rumble that did little to calm his nerves. As he pulled onto the empty highway, the setting sun cast long shadows across the road, stretching out before him like grasping fingers. Tyler couldn't shake the feeling that he was driving towards something he couldn't quite understand or escape. The drive to Route 375 was uneventful, almost eerily so. Miles of nothing stretched across both sides of the road, just open desert baking under an orange-hued sunset. Scrub brush and Joshua trees dotted the landscape, their twisted forms casting strange shadows in the fading light. Tyler's eyes scanned the horizon, half expecting to see something unusual, but there was nothing but dust and silence. He spotted the gas station when he was about a mile out, a lonely outpost tucked beneath a flickering neon sign that read, Granger's Gas and Garage. The letters buzzed and sputtered, 
casting an intermittent blue glow across the empty parking lot. As Tyler drew closer, the details of the place came into sharper focus, and his heart sank. The building was old, far older than it had any right to be. Paint peeled from the walls in long, curling strips, revealing weather-beaten wood beneath. Dust-coated windows reflected the fading sky, their grimy surfaces obscuring whatever lay inside. The pump stations out front looked ancient. Half of them rusted shut, the other half blinking sporadically like they didn't know how to be broken or working. A tumbleweed rolled across the cracked pavement, coming to rest against one of the defunct pumps. As Tyler parked, the gravel crunching beneath his tires, a wiry man in overalls appeared from the station's front door. He moved with a shuffling gait, like someone who had spent too long in one place. His eyes were sunken, cheeks sallow, the kind of look you get when you've been out here too long with no good company. Deep lines etched his face, telling stories of harsh sun and harsher living. He didn't smile, just tossed Tyler a set of keys that jangled ominously in the still air. Rules are taped to the door, the man said, his voice as dry and cracked as the surrounding landscape. He pointed a gnarled finger toward the back garage. Read them. Follow them. Tyler caught the keys, the metal cold against his palm, despite the lingering heat. He raised an eyebrow, trying to mask his growing unease with a show of nonchalance. This part of the job description? The old man's eyes narrowed, a flicker of something, fear, warning, passing across his weathered features. No, he said flatly, each word landing like a stone. It's how you stay alive. Before Tyler could ask another question, could even begin to process the ominous statement, the man shuffled toward an old pickup parked nearby. The vehicle was as battered and worn as its owner, its once blue paint faded to a dull gray. The engine coughed to life, sputtering like a dying animal before settling into a ragged idol. Without another word or backwards glance, the old man peeled away, leaving a thin cloud of dust in his wake. Tyler stood there for a long moment, keys in hand, watching the taillights of the pickup grow smaller until they vanished into the gathering darkness. The silence that followed was absolute, broken only by the soft buzz of the neon sign and the whisper of wind across the empty lot. He turned back to the station, its dilapidated form looming before him like a sentinel in the desert night. With a deep breath that did little to steady his nerves, Tyler walked towards the back of the building. Each step felt heavier than the last, as if the very ground beneath his feet was trying to hold him back. But the memory of unpaid bills and mounting debts pushed him forward, even as every instinct screamed at him to get back in his truck and drive away as fast as he could. Tyler stood at the entrance to the back garage, the set of keys a cold weight in his hand. A laminated sheet of paper fluttered against the door, secured by yellowing tape that curled at the edges. The fluorescent light above the door flickered erratically, casting strange shadows that seemed to dance across the paper's surface. The title, written in bold, uneven letters, read, Rules for Working the Night Shift. He read them aloud, his voice catching on the words, each one feeling more absurd and unsettling than the last. Rule 1. Lock the front doors at exactly 11.11 p.m. Do not open them for anyone, no matter how much they beg or cry. Rule 2. If you hear the bell above the front door ring after closing time, check the cameras. If there's nothing there, stay in the garage. Rule 3. Do not look directly at the pumps between 2.30 a.m. and 2.45 a.m. They don't like being seen. Rule 4. If a black car pulls up to pump number 4, fill the tank and don't charge the driver. Say, drive safe and walk away. Rule 5. 
If the lights flicker twice, close your eyes and count to 10. When you open them, act like nothing happened. Rule six, don't answer any phone calls between 12 a.m. and 3.33 a.m. It's not a customer. Rule seven, keep the radio on at all times. If static interrupts the music, do not turn it off. Listen closely, it's giving you instructions. Rule eight, at 4.44 a.m., someone will knock on the back door. Do not let them in, no matter who they say they are. Rule nine, if you hear footsteps on the roof, turn off all the lights and hide until they go away. Rule 10, if you see lights in the sky, leave immediately. Don't finish your shift, just go. Tyler swallowed hard, his mouth suddenly dry as the desert air around him. It was a joke, right? Some elaborate hazing routine for new hires. But as he reread the rules, taking in the earnest, almost desperate tone of the writing, a cold dread began to seep into his bones. He tried to laugh, to shake off the growing sense of unease, but the sound died in his throat, stillborn and hollow. There was a chill in the air now, an odd sensation that crept along the back of his neck, making the hairs there stand on end. It wasn't just the temperature dropping as night fell. This was something else, something that spoke of wrongness and danger. Tyler fumbled with the keys, his hands shaking slightly as he found the right one. He unlocked the door to the garage, pushing it open with a loud creak that echoed across the empty lot. The sound made him wince, feeling suddenly exposed as if he had announced his presence to something. Inside, the space smelled of old rubber, oil, and rust, the familiar sense of a mechanic's life. But underneath it all was something else, a faint odor he couldn't quite place. It reminded him of ozone, of the air after a lightning strike. A few cars sat in various stages of disrepair, their shadowy forms looming in the dim light like sleeping beasts. Tools were scattered across workbenches, some of them so old and worn that Tyler couldn't immediately identify their purpose. He set his phone on a nearby bench, checked the time, 10.48 p.m. The numbers glowed an eerie blue in the darkness, a countdown to... What? Tyler shook his head, trying to dispel the thoughts crowding his mind. Just one night, he whispered to himself, the words small and unconvincing in the vast silence of the garage. Easy money. But as he moved deeper into the space, flicking on lights that buzzed and flickered reluctantly to life, Tyler couldn't shake the feeling that he had stepped into something far beyond his understanding. The rules echoed in his mind, each one a warning, a piece of a puzzle he wasn't sure he wanted to solve. The night stretched out before him, long and dark and full of unknowns. And somewhere in the distance, beyond the reach of the station's meager lights, the desert waited, silent, watching, holding secrets Tyler was afraid he might soon discover. The shift started quietly, almost deceptively so. Tyler busied himself fixing an old Chevy that had been left in the garage, its engine a familiar puzzle of metal and grease. He lost track of time as he worked, the familiar rhythm of wrench and socket lulling his nerves. The radio crackled on a nearby shelf, playing soft country tunes beneath the hum of fluorescent lights. For a while, it was almost possible to forget the strangeness of the situation, to pretend this was just another job in just another garage. But as the hour grew late, the wrongness of the place began to seep back in. The shadows in the corners seemed to deepen, to move when he wasn't looking directly at them. The country music on the radio took on a tinny, distant quality, as if it was being broadcast from very far away. And always, always, there was the weight of the rules hanging over everything. At 11.10 p.m., 
Tyler walked to the front of the station, his footsteps echoing loudly in the empty space. He double-checked the locks, feeling silly as he slid the deadbolt into place, like following a bad prank, but the pay was good enough not to question it. Through the grimy windows, he could see nothing but darkness, the desert night pressing in against the thin barrier of glass and wood. At exactly 11.11 p.m., the bell above the door jingled. Tyler froze, his heart suddenly hammering in his chest. The sound was clear, unmistakable, the cheerful tinkle of metal against metal. But the door hadn't moved. The locks were still in place, the deadbolt firmly shot. He turned toward the security monitors, ancient CRT screens that cast a sickly green glow across the counter. On the grainy black and white display, the front entrance was empty. No movement, no sign of anything that could have caused the sound. The bell jingled again, soft but insistent, as if someone was gently shaking the door. Just the wind, Tyler muttered though he didn't believe it. There was no wind tonight, just the still, heavy air of the desert. He stayed rooted to the spot, eyes fixed on the monitor, wrench clutched in his hand like a lifeline. After a few tense moments that felt like hours, the sound stopped. The silence that followed was absolute, pressing in on Tyler's ears until he could hear the rush of blood in his veins. Slowly, carefully, he backed away from the front of the store, keeping his eyes on the door until he was safely back in the garage. The first rule had been easy enough to follow, but something about the way the bell rang, like it knew, like it was testing him, made his stomach churn. Tyler tried to shake off the unease, to focus on the work at hand, but as he turned back to the Chevy, he couldn't help but feel that something had changed. The garage felt different now, charged with an energy he couldn't explain. And somewhere, just beyond the reach of his senses, he was sure something was watching, waiting to see what he would do next. Hours drifted by, the desert night pressing in against the thin walls of the station. Tyler kept himself busy between cars, but every so often, he glanced at the rules taped beside the door just to remind himself. The words seemed to shimmer in the flickering light, each one a lifeline in a sea of strangeness. The radio played on, a mix of old country songs and late-night talk shows. Tyler found himself grateful for the sound, a tenuous connection to the normal world outside. But, as the night wore on, the signal began to fade in and out, static creeping in at the edges of the music like ivy on an old building. At 2.12 a.m., the radio sputtered, cutting off mid-song. The silence that followed was deafening, broken only by the soft hum of the fluorescent lights and the pounding of Tyler's heart in his ears. Then, slowly, a new sound emerged from the speakers. Static hissed through the air, a low whispering hum that crawled into Tyler's ears and made him shiver. It wasn't the normal static of a bad signal. This was something else, something alive. He found himself leaning in, straining to hear. What? Words? A message? The static ebbed and flowed like breath, like something trying to speak. Then, faintly, Beneath the hiss and crackle, he heard it. Words, barely audible, but unmistakable. Pump number four. Tyler's blood ran cold. He turned to look out the garage window, towards the front of the station where the old pumps stood like sentinels in the night. And there, gliding silently into view, was a car. It was sleek and black, its surface so dark it seemed to absorb what little light there was. No headlights, no sound of an engine, just smooth, silent motion as it came to a stop precisely at pump number four. Tyler's pulse quickened as he grabbed a gas nozzle and stepped out into the night, 
the rules echoing in his mind. The air felt wrong, thick and heavy, like it was pressing down on him from all sides. Each step towards the car felt like wading through molasses, his movements slow and dreamlike. The station lights cast long shadows across the pavement, and Tyler could have sworn they moved, reaching out towards him with grasping fingers. As he approached the car, he realized he couldn't see inside. The windows were tinted so dark they might as well have been painted black. The driver never rolled down the window, never made a sound. The shadowy figure behind the glass was indistinct, blurred by darkness, more an absence of light than a presence. Tyler's hands shook as he inserted the nozzle into the tank. The click of metal on metal sounded impossibly loud in the stillness of the night. As he pumped the gas, he couldn't shake the feeling that something was watching him, not just from inside the car, but from everywhere. The desert, the sky, even the very air around him seemed alive with unseen eyes. When the tank was full, Tyler hesitated. The rules flashed through his mind, insistent and urgent. He swallowed hard, his mouth dry as sandpaper, and whispered the words from the rule sheet. Drive safe. For a moment, nothing happened. Then the engine roared to life, a sound so sudden and loud in the quiet night that Tyler stumbled backward. It wasn't the purr of a normal car engine, but a deep, guttural growl that seemed to come from somewhere far below the earth. The car sped off into the night without another word, leaving behind only the acrid smell of burnt rubber and a lingering sense of wrongness. Tyler stood there for a long moment, heart racing, trying to process what had just happened. The night air felt colder now, a chill that seeped into his bones despite the lingering desert heat. He hurried back to the garage, casting nervous glances over his shoulder, half expecting to see the black car returning or some new horror emerging from the shadows. Once inside, he leaned against the wall, taking deep breaths to steady himself. The radio crackled back to life, country music filling the air as if nothing had happened. But Tyler knew better now. He understood that the rules weren't just some joke or hazing ritual. They were a lifeline, a guide to surviving whatever strange forces governed this place. As he turned back to his work, trying to lose himself in the familiar rhythms of engines and tools, Tyler couldn't shake the feeling that he had passed some kind of test. But whether that was a good thing or not, he wasn't sure. The night was far from over, and he had a sinking feeling that the black car was just the beginning. The hours crept by, each minute feeling longer than the last. Tyler worked mechanically, his hands moving through familiar motions while his mind raced. Every sound, every shadow made him jump, his nerves frayed to the breaking point. The rules had taken on a new significance now, no longer just words on paper, but vital instructions for survival. At 4.12 a.m., as Tyler was elbow deep in the engine of an old Ford, the lights in the garage flickered once, twice, and then went dark. The sudden absence of light was total, oppressive. Tyler froze, his heart hammering in his chest, the wrench in his hand suddenly feeling inadequate as protection against whatever might be lurking in the darkness. The rule echoed in his mind, urgent and insistent. If the lights flicker twice, close your eyes and count to ten. When you open them, act like nothing happened. He squeezed his eyes shut, his breath coming in short, sharp gasps. One, two, three. He whispered, each number feeling heavier than the last. The darkness behind his eyelids seemed alive, pulsing with malevolent energy. He could feel something moving in the space around him, unseen but undeniably 
present. Eight, nine, ten. Tyler opened his eyes. The lights were back on, the garage looking exactly as it had before. But something had changed. The air felt thicker, charged with an energy he couldn't explain. And he wasn't alone anymore. A sound from above made him look up. Footsteps thudded across the roof, slow and deliberate, as if whoever or whatever it was wanted him to hear. Each step sent a shudder through the building, dust motes dancing in the flickering fluorescent light. Tyler's mouth went dry, his palms slick with sweat. He remembered the rule. If you hear footsteps on the roof, turn off all the lights and hide until they go away. With shaking hands, he reached for the light switch, plunging the garage into darkness once more. He crouched beneath a workbench, every breath a shallow rasp that seemed deafening in the silence. The footsteps continued, circling overhead like a predator stalking its prey. Then, abruptly, they stopped. The silence that followed was somehow worse than the footsteps. Tyler strained his ears, trying to detect any sound, any hint of what might be happening. His muscles ached from holding still, every instinct screaming at him to run. Then came the knock, soft but deliberate, at the back door. Hey, Tyler, a voice called. It was the man who had given him the job, the gravelly tones unmistakable. Open up, I forgot something. Tyler's blood turned to ice. The rules flashed through his mind. At 4.44 a.m., someone will knock on the back door. Do not let them in, no matter who they say they are. He glanced at his phone. 4.44 a.m. exactly. Tyler? You in there, boy? Come on, open up. The voice sounded so normal, so human. But there was an undercurrent to it, a wrongness that made Tyler's skin crawl. He stayed perfectly still, barely daring to breathe, praying the man, or whatever it was, would go away. The knocking grew louder, more insistent. The door shuddered in its frame, the wood creaking ominously. Tyler, open the goddamn door! The voice had changed now, deeper, angrier. It no longer sounded human at all. And then, as suddenly as it had started, it stopped. The silence that followed was absolute, broken only by the pounding of Tyler's heart in his ears. Slowly, cautiously, he emerged from his hiding place. He reached for the light switch with trembling fingers, half expecting something to grab him from the darkness. But nothing did. The lights flickered back to life, revealing an empty garage. Everything was as he had left it. Tyler let out a shaky breath, relief washing over him. He had survived another test, had followed the rules, and come out the other side. But as he turned back to his work, trying to shake off the lingering fear, he saw something that made his heart stop. Through the grimy window of the garage, he saw it, the lights in the sky, pale orbs floating above the desert, too bright, too close, moving with purpose. They pulsed with an otherworldly energy, casting long shadows across the empty lot. The final rule echoed in Tyler's mind. If you see lights in the sky, leave immediately. Don't finish your shift, just go. He didn't need to be told twice. Grabbing his keys and phone, Tyler bolted for the door. The rules didn't matter anymore. He had to get out. Tyler tore through the desert in his old truck, wheels kicking up clouds of dust and gravel as he sped down Route 375. The dashboard clock read 5.03 a.m., the green numbers a stark reminder of how long the night had been. The first hints of dawn were just beginning to lighten the eastern sky, but the darkness still clung stubbornly to the land. The lights followed him relentlessly, 
trailing just beyond the reach of his taillights. They moved with an unnatural grace, weaving and bobbing in the air like curious predators playing with their prey. No matter how fast Tyler drove, they stayed with him, silent, hovering, glowing with an intensity that hurt his eyes when he dared to glance in the rearview mirror. Sweat dripped down his brow as his hands gripped the steering wheel tighter. The rules circled in his head like vultures, each one a reminder of the nightmarish shift he'd just escaped. If you see lights in the sky, leave immediately. Just go. But something gnawed at his mind. Something unfinished, unspoken. He had followed every rule, had played the game set before him. But it didn't feel like enough. It felt like he was still playing, still trapped in some cosmic test he didn't understand. The realization hit him like a physical blow. He pulled over to the side of the road, the truck's tires crunching on the gravel shoulder. His breath came in short, sharp gasps as panic clawed at his chest. The gas station keys jangled as he dug into his pocket, the metal cold against his sweaty palm. His phone sat on the passenger seat, but when he grabbed it, the screen remained stubbornly dark. No service, no connection to the outside world. Just static and a faint hum from the radio that wouldn't turn off, no matter how many times he jabbed at the power button. Tyler stared at the laminated sheet of rules clutched in his hand, the paper crumpled and smeared with grease from his frantic escape. There were ten listed. He had memorized them, had lived them over the course of the long night. But the way the paper felt, the weight, the thickness, something was off. With trembling fingers, he turned it over. His breath hitched in his throat as he saw it. There, on the back of the sheet, was another rule. Rule 12 was scrawled at the bottom in smudged, handwritten ink, as if it had been added in a hurry. When you leave the station, make sure the copy isn't following you. If it is, you have one chance to fix it. Say its name before sunrise. If you don't, it becomes you. Tyler's stomach dropped, a cold dread washing over him. His eyes darted to the rearview mirror, scanning the empty road behind him. The lights in the sky pulsed, drawing closer, their glow casting long shadows across the desert floor. His blood ran ice cold as the realization slammed into him. Something had left the gas station with him, something more than just the memories of a terrifying night. He scrambled to check the rearview mirror again, his heart pounding so hard he thought it might burst from his chest. And there he was. A figure in the back seat, sitting impossibly still in the shadows, illuminated for a fraction of a second by the distant glow of the highway lights. It was him. Same face, same clothes, same terrified expression. His reflection, his double, staring back with hollow eyes that seemed to drink in the darkness around them. No, no, no. Tyler whispered, his breath ragged. His mind raced, trying to make sense of what he was seeing. The twelfth rule repeated in his head, taunting him with its vague instructions. Say its name before sunrise, or it becomes you. But what the hell did that mean? He wasn't even sure what its name was. His name? Someone else's? The name of whatever force governed the strange rules of the gas station. He reached toward the back seat, hand trembling, not sure what he would do if he actually touched the thing wearing his face. But the moment he moved, the doppelganger vanished, leaving only a faint, sour scent in the air, like burnt plastic and ozone. Tyler gasped, sweat trickling down his neck, his heart hammering against his ribs. Then the lights outside began moving again. Closer, brighter, more insistent. 
He knew instinctively that something worse was on its way. Something connected to the station, the copy, and the rules. Something that wouldn't let him escape so easily. The eastern sky was growing lighter by the minute. Sunrise was coming, and with it, a deadline Tyler didn't fully understand, but knew he couldn't afford to miss. With shaking hands, he turned the key in the ignition. The truck roared to life, the familiar rumble doing little to calm his frayed nerves. As he pulled back onto the highway, the lights in the sky seemed to pulse with anticipation. The race was on, against time, against the copy, against whatever forces had ensnared him in this nightmare. And Tyler had a sinking feeling that the real test was only just beginning.